Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Friday morning on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. Happy Friday. I'm Nicole Hernandez, and we want to get you ready for your weekend because it's going to be a hot one. So we have meteorologist Thomas Patrick with us. Thomas, what's it like? Yeah, it's going to be back into the 90s and even triple digits for some areas this upcoming weekend with today just cranking up the heat another notch compared to these last couple days. Now, first thing this morning, it's decently mild out there. It's still at 62 degrees. That's been about our low temperature for the day in Spokane and 50s and 60s across the board. Nothing unusual for the summer season, but the heat is going to continue to amp up a couple more days here. So just like last weekend, it's just going to climb into and through this weekend. There's your expected highs 91 in Spokane and as hot as 97 in OMAC and even hotter in the Tri Cities at 99. But we do have heat advisories, which will go into effect starting this Saturday for Central Washington. Well, this morning, the Lilac City is waking up without a city administrator. Former city administrator Johnny Perkins officially resigned from his position yesterday. The city spokesperson says an HR investigation found evidence Perkins violated the city's sexual harassment policy. Perkins sent his letter of resignation to Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward yesterday, saying he's leaving for personal health reasons. Mayor Woodward, though, sent out a press release accepting his resignation, but also said Perkins had been on leave since last month because of, quote, concerns from fellow employees. We are expecting Woodward to talk more about the allegations later today, and Perkins also sent us a statement where he denied all of the allegations against him. Well, this morning we have learned that the Spokane Police Department has nearly completed testing on all of its backlog sexual assault test kits. Over the last two years, Spokane Police have been working their way through more than 1,400 rape kits, some dating all the way back to 1984. It's part of a statewide push to work through the backlog of untested kits. Spokane Police received grant money from the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs, allowing them to assign two investigators to the cold case sexual assault cases. It gave us people and time. It let us um, remove myself and the other detective from current caseload and focus on this. And really, if that grant wasn't part of this, I, I don't think that would happen. Through the testing process, detectives were able to identify nearly 300 DNA matches for criminal defendants and a suspect for a 1979 California murder. They also filed six criminal charges, including rape, assault, and kidnapping. Spokane police officials also say the final push to test the remaining 23 kits is taking place. It's 6.03. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Former Idaho lawmaker Aaron Von Ellinger filed an appeal for his rape conviction. The documents say his attorneys are claiming the state failed to prove the rape occurred beyond a reasonable doubt. They're asking for a judge to vacate his conviction. Von Ellinger was convicted last year of raping a former state house intern in 2021. A judge sentenced him to up to 20 years in prison. WashDOT finally chose which of the two designs they will go with for the last segment of the North-South Freeway. The community voted and preferred the design that would make room for more pedestrian bridges and future land development. That design also is expected to cost $25 million less than some of the other alternatives. The design would also keep the I-90 off-ramp to Altamont Street. Construction on this part of the freeway is scheduled to start in 2026 and last about four years. If you're looking for something fun to do, the You Pick Lavender Festival is back in Deer Park this weekend. The festival is at Evening Light Lavender Farm and lets you pick your very own lavender. There will also be live music, craft vendors, and of course, lavender flavored food and drinks, which I know from experience are very yummy. Tickets are $10 and you can buy them on the farm's website or just straight at the festival doors. It's tomorrow and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, are you a diehard Spoken Indians fan and also happen to be getting married? Because now you can officially be legally married by Ribby the Red Band Trout. The Spoken Indians mascot is an ordained minister now and you can actually book him for weddings right here in Spokane. We're not really sure how Ribby's gonna run the ceremony though considering, you know, he can't talk and all he does is this, the little Ribby shake. So if you book him, definitely let us know how it plays out for you, we wanna know. That's a look at your morning rush. Tonight, the bands Jimmy Eat World and Manchester Orchestra will be performing at the main stage at the podium in downtown Spokane. The big names join a star studded lineup that have been drawn to Spokane as we become a live music destination for so many bands. As a newer venue, event manager Matt Myers wants to build on the podium's reputation to host even bigger names in music. 
We haven't brought any country in here yet, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is ironic because of how how big of a country town Spokane is, right? Um, I've had multiple conversations. I know my my agents are looking at it or working on it. Now tickets are still available for tonight's concert and make sure to keep an eye on the podium as they continue their summer concert lineup. After tonight's event, they'll host the 2023 World Badminton Championship at the end of September. So that actually brings us to our wake up call this morning. We are asking you what band or musical artist would you like to see perform in our area? You can text us your thoughts to 509-448-2000 or post to social media and use the hashtag up with Krim. Charity from Kashmir says she would like to see Tim McGraw in concert. That would be a great one. He's, we have, good. he's really good. We have one person saying Kid Rock. Another viewer writing in saying Cher, the glam goddess. I love that one. Wow. That's a great one. Didn't, well, she was here though recently, right? Cher? Yeah. No? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, anyways, text us at 509-448-2000. I finally came up an, with an answer because it was so tough for me because it's like, I'd love to see Tool in concert. Well, they are coming here. I'd love to see Foo Fighters in concert. They are also coming to Spokane. How about Muse? Muse is also one of my favorite bands. I haven't seen them on the uh, on the docket yet for Spokane, but yeah, would love to hear. I saw Tame Impala. I would love to see them in Spokane as well. As for our weather, it's just going to heat up through this weekend. Current temperatures, 50s and 60s, very typical for a summer morning. All clear skies across uh, the inland northwest as well, and not really looking at any chances for showers or storms across the uh, Canadian border, unlike the last couple days. So we are looking good for today, but we are looking very hot. Temperatures not just in the low 90s today, but check out this weekend 95 and 98, respectively. Sunday is going to be a scorcher with some areas pushing triple digits. Well, if you're looking to stay cool this weekend, this one might not this be the event good. for you, but it's going to be a great <laughs> event regardless because this weekend, some of the best chefs throughout the region are all in one venue. It's one of the largest culinary events in the area, highlighting all of the dynamic food scene here in the, in the Northwest. And that's, of course, where Brandon T. Jones is thriving this morning. He's checking out the place for himself. So, Brandon, what's going on? Channing, Nicole, we're having a great time this morning. It's Friday, so we got to bring the good vibes, you know, early on a Friday, get the day started off on a positive yep. note. Chef Brian Duffy, he's the celebrity chef that's in town with all these other fabulous and amazing, I mean, just absolutely amazing local chefs yeah. and, and restaurants. And it's just been so cool, man. Chef, we appreciate you for joining us this it is morning. my pleasure. And I, this guy's awesome, you know. I don't know how much I can say, you know, to really, you know, put it into perspective, but... You're, you're an amazing guy, and thank you just for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure, man. So, Chef, I mean, can you talk about Crave Northwest 2023? Sure. You, you've been here every single year, right? Yep. And uh, what is it that keeps bringing you back? Uh, I, I mean, honestly, it has to do with the people that put the event on for me. Yeah. And then the people that I get to meet while I'm out here. Because I'm not just coming out to cook. I come out, I get to do things like this. You know, we work closely with Lone, Lone Wolf Harley-Davidson. I get to do a charity ride every single year to give something back into the community. These guys are so local forward yeah. and so community forward because it's the surrounding community that comes that are buying the tickets that are coming in to do it. They treat the chefs unbelievably well. They make it super easy for us to come out here and work every single thing down to the basic of ingredients of a type of salt that you want is something that these guys are doing. Again, it's a spiceology thing that's a local company as well, so yeah. everything comes back around. Um, it's just a really cool event because for me, it's like going to school at a point because I come out and I see some of the event, some of the, the foods that some of these other chefs are putting together and it starts sparking things yeah, in my brain. For sure. You know, when you're in a restaurant, in a kitchen by yourself, your creativity comes from a different level, but doing an event like this literally drives you and, and, and makes you thrive for more more education. I love that and I feel like I'm being educated by you right now, right? You know, so last night you see some of the video where it's just a bunch of people out here all having a good time. There's food, there's wine. What more can you want, you know, in, a, in an event, right? But then also, you know, you came over here from Philadelphia. You've been here every year now. Let's talk about the actual, the scene here in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene in yep. the Northwest. How beautiful is it out here? I mean, look at this. Look at this and every, stop for one second. I mean, look, that, that was not a fake bird. <laughs> that bird flew in here. Uh, just, I mean, look at the entire surrounding. When you're out here at Center Place, I mean, 
everything. There's a waterfall down there with a bridge in front of it that you get to stand on. Amazing music. They have uh, Native American tribes that come out that do a dance and do a song beforehand. Local music, local food, and all local chefs out here. It's just a great, great, great event. It is a great event. I got a chance to experience that firsthand last night and we've got Chef Brian Duffy for another half hour. We're so thankful he woke up this early to speak with us and to bring those good vibes, the good energy on a Friday <laughs> morning, you know. So, uh, you know, I don't know what y'all are doing out there, but uh, if you don't have any plans this weekend, you need to go online, buy your tickets to Crave Northwest 2023 and come have a good time. Enjoy yourself, right? So yeah, we'll go ahead and toss it back to you all in the studio.